Jane's pregnancy is all over the news and now everyone is calling her the pregnant virgin. Stay tuned to find out how this story went viral online and if Jane actually got pregnant by miracle as you learn some handy Spanish vocab. Es que no entiendo. ¿Cómo pasó esto? Todo empezó cuando la gran estrella de telenovelas, Rogelio de la Vega, tuiteó la alerta a Ámbar ya que su nieto fue secuestrado. Y ahora ha tuiteado que el bebé ya está a salvo. Arroba Rogelio de la Vega. Jane Tina Matelio, gracias por sus oraciones. Hashtag familia, hashtag amor, hashtag famor. Ahora la historia es una hashtag locura. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. Ay, no. Jane la Virgen embarazada. Es que no entiendo. ¿Cómo pasó esto? Como in this context means how, but it's one of those Spanish words that has many different meanings depending on how it's written and how you use it. You would use como with an accent in a direct question, like como pasó esto? How did this happen? But como can also be used with an accent outside direct questions. For example, no entiendo como pasó esto. I don't understand how this happened. Como without an accent can mean two different things. It can be used as a comparative, fuerte como un roble, strong like an oak. It translates to as or like. It can also be used as the verb to eat. So in this scene, Rogelio is using como to ask, como pasó esto? How did this happen? Referring to the press gathering outside their home. Es que no entiendo. ¿Cómo pasó esto? Todo empezó cuando la gran estrella de telenovelas, Rogelio de la Vega, Tuiteó la alerta a Ámbar ya que su nieto fue secuestrado. Tuiteó is the past tense of tuitear, which means to tweet. And believe it or not, it has been added to the Spanish dictionary. You conjugate it like a regular AR verb. The spelling of the verb has been adapted into Spanish phonetics, so to tweet turns into tweet, the sound a bird makes in Spanish. In this scene, tuiteó is referring to a tweet Rogelio de la Vega posted about his missing grandson. Alerta Amber is an alert used for missing children, and here Amber refers to the name and not the color. The color Amber translates to Ambar in Spanish, which look and sound almost the same, but are clearly used in different circumstances. So in this scene, Amber alert means Alerta Amber, not Alerta Ambar, which makes sense because Rogelia de la Vegas' grandson was kidnapped. Todo empezó cuando la gran estrella de telenovelas, Rogelio de la Vega, tuiteó la alerta a Ámbar ya que su nieto fue secuestrado. Y ahora ha tuiteado que el bebé ya está a salvo. A salvo here means secure, but it has different variations. Salvo without the A means safe. For example, está sano y salvo. He is safe and sound. It can also mean except. Estaban todos sentados salvo Rogelio. They were all sitting down except Rogelio. A salvo has a bit more nuance. It means safe from harm or out of harm's way. While you usually use salvo in the expression sano y salvo, you can use a salvo when referring to someone or something's condition of safety. In this scene, a salvo means that Rogelia de la Vegas' grandson is secure and safe from further harm since he has been found after being kidnapped. Y ahora ha tuiteado que el bebé ya está a salvo. Arroba Rogelio de la Vega. Jane Tina Matelio, gracias por sus oraciones. Hashtag familia, hashtag amor, hashtag famor. Oraciones, the plural of oración, literally means prayers. Pray can be translated as orar. However, the verb rezar is more commonly used in some regions, in Spain, for example. Gracias por sus oraciones means thank you for your prayers. Rogelio de la Vega is thanking his followers for their support during his grandson's kidnapping. Arroba Rogelio de la Vega. Jane Tina Matelio, gracias por sus oraciones. Hashtag familia, hashtag amor, hashtag famor. Ahora la historia es una hashtag locura. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. Locura means madness, so why is it translated as crazy here? For a very simple reason, the Spanish sentence structurally needs a noun, locura, to explain the situation, while the English sentence structurally needs an adjective, crazy. Loco or loca can also be translated as crazy. Estás loco. You're crazy. 
Let's look at another sentence. Hacer eso es una locura. Doing that is madness. So, when using these words, you have to ask yourself, am I looking for an adjective, crazy, or am I looking for a noun, madness? So, in this context, crazy means locura, because that's the adjective with which they're describing the story that went viral. Ahora la historia es una hashtag locura. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. In this context, en línea means online. It's referring to people looking up her name on the internet. In this next sentence, however, poneros en línea, get in line. It means getting in line. So as I always say, context is key. Ahora la historia es una hashtag locura. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. Ay, no. Jane la Virgen embarazada. I literally translates to oh or ouch. It's an exclamation to denote surprise, disappointment, or pain. For example, ay caramba, damn, geez, oh no. But be careful because other Spanish words sound exactly the same. Ay sounds the same as ay, but it's one of the most used Spanish verbs. A ver, to be. Hay mucha gente fuera. There are a lot of people outside. Ahí is used to denote where something is. Ahí estás. There you are. Let's use all three in one sentence. Ahí. Hay mucha gente ahí fuera. Oh no, there's a lot of people out there. In this line, Jane says, I know. Oh no, because she's dreading what the news reporter is going to say, that she is a pregnant virgin. Embarazada is a false friend in English. It means pregnant, despite sounding like the English word for embarrassed. If you're trying to say, I am very embarrassed, but you say, estoy muy embarazada, you'll really be saying, I am really pregnant, and then you'll really be embarrassed. So keep in mind that this is a false friend and save yourself the embarrassment of randomly confessing that you're pregnant. In this episode, the rumor breaks out that Jane got pregnant while being a virgin, so reporters start calling her Jane la Virgen Embarazada, Jane the Pregnant Virgin, as a play on words on the Virgin Mary. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. Ay, no. Jane la Virgen Embarazada. ¿Podría ser un milagro moderno? No. Milagro moderno means modern miracle. Remember, the order of words changes from English to Spanish. In Spanish, it's noun plus adjective, while in English, it's adjective plus noun. Milagro moderno, modern miracle. This milagro, of course, is referring to the viral scandal that Jane got pregnant without ever having sex. ¿Podría ser un milagro moderno? No! Sí. Fue maestra en nuestra escuela. Y ustedes estuvieron explotándome. Y creemos en ella y más. Estuvieron explotándome in this context means you were exploiting me. Estuvieron comes from the verb estar, which means to be. Explotar in this scene means to exploit. However, explotar can also literally mean to explode. Jane is talking about people that she has worked for before, so it makes sense that explotándome would mean exploiting. Me is a reflexive pronoun. The use of it in this sentence refers to an action that is happening to Jane, since she was the one being exploited at her old job. Sí, fue maestra en nuestra escuela. Y ustedes estuvieron explotándome. Y creemos en ella y más. Cuando empezaron a pasar cosas. ¿Cosas? ¿Qué cosas? No tengo idea. Pasar in this sentence means to happen, but it has a wide variety of meanings. Pasar can mean spend. Jane pasa tiempo con su familia. Jane spends time with her family. Pasar can mean pass. La prensa pasó por su casa. The press passed by her house. Pasar can also mean turn. Jane quiere pasar página en este asunto. Jane wants to turn the page on this matter. In this scene, the nun is saying that random miracles suddenly started to happen once Jane got pregnant. No tengo idea literally means I have no idea or I don't know. It's an expression often used in Latin American countries. In Spain, however, you would say, no tengo ni idea. I have no idea. Really emphasizing the no. Since Jane Villanueva is Venezuelan-Mexican, she says, no tengo idea, 
because she has absolutely no idea what miracles the press might have invented. Cuando empezaron a pasar cosas. ¿Cosas? ¿Qué cosas? No tengo idea. Durante siete años quise embarazarme. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? No lo sé. Quise embarazarme means I wanted to get pregnant. Quise comes from the verb querer, which here means to want, but it can have many different meanings depending on the context. For example, to like or to love. In this case, quise embarazarme, I wanted to get pregnant, is referring to that woman's desire to have a baby. Another example would be... ¿Estás feliz? Nunca quise ese puesto, Beth. If we click on quise in this interactive subtitles, we'll see that in this context, quise means wanted too. Let's hear it pronounced by Shakira in this video example right here. Oh, and if you're wondering what's this tool, it's FluentU, a handy dandy app for learning Spanish. All of FluentU's videos have subtitles written by language experts, so you always see the correct definition for words and expressions in that particular context. And extra video examples of natives using the vocab. That way you can quickly tell if quise means loved, meant, liked, or wanted. On FluentU, you learn to speak like a native through thousands of authentic Spanish videos, like movie scenes, clips from TV shows, TED Talks, and music videos. Fluent U also gives you personalized quizzes and speaking questions based on videos that you have watched to make sure that you remember everything you have just learned. You can try it right now for absolutely free by signing up for a two-week free trial by using the link in the description down below. But wait, there's more. Fluent U is currently having a sale, which means right now is basically the perfect time to check them out. Durante siete años quise embarazar. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? No lo sé. Quienes with an accent can be used in a direct question like this one. Quienes son esas personas? Who are those people? Quienes can also be used in an indirect question. No sé quienes son. I don't know who they are. Quienes son esas personas refers to Jane's grandmother's confusion over seeing random strangers speak about her granddaughter on national television. Durante siete años quise embarazar. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? No lo sé. Abracé a Jane. No Mi bebé creo. nacerá en tres meses. No lo creo means I can't believe this. It's a sentence used to denote surprise and disbelief. If someone from Spain were to say no lo creo without the reflexive pronoun me, it would mean I don't think so. Jane speaks in a Latin American dialect, so when she exclaims, no lo creo, she's expressing her disbelief at people making up stories of her performing miracles. Abracé a Jane. No Mi bebé creo. nacerá en tres meses. ¿Has oído de las coincidencias, linda? Eso está muy raro. Abuela. Oye. Raro in this context means weird, but in other contexts it can mean rare or unusual. In this scene, Jane's grandma is suggesting that Linda getting pregnant after Jane hugged her might be more than a coincidence, which Jane does not agree with. Oye means hey in this context. Oye comes from the verb oír, which means to hear. It is used as a way to get someone's attention or to reprimand them. In this scene, Jane's grandma is reprimanding Jane for being angry at her for believing what the people on TV are saying. ¿Has oído de las coincidencias, Linda? Eso está muy raro. ¡Abuela! Oye. Y es muy extraño. Parece que Jane entró en labor a bordo de un autobús de la ruta 125. Veamos a la mujer que le ayudó, el arcángel Gabriel. Muy extraño means very strange. As we saw before, muy raro also means very strange because they are synonym expressions. So, the news reporter could say, y es muy raro, instead of, y es muy extraño, and the meaning wouldn't change. A bordo de un autobús means while riding a bus. A bordo literally means inside as a means of transport, so it could also be translated as aboard. The news reporter, of course, is talking about how Jane gave birth while riding the bus. Y es muy extraño. Parece que Jane entró en labor a bordo de un autobús de la ruta 125. Veamos a la mujer que le ayudó, el arcángel Gabriel. Gabriel. Disculpe, ¿podría decirnos algo sobre este gran milagro? Yo no sé si sea un milagro. Sí, exacto. Gracias, Gabriel. Gabriel. Disculpe means excuse me. 
Disculpe comes from the verb disculpar, which means to excuse or to forgive. Its most common use is as a polite way to get someone's attention. Excuse me or pardon me. In this scene, the news reporter is trying to get Gabriel to talk about the miracle that happened when Jane gave birth on the bus. No sé si será un milagro means I don't know if that's a miracle. As you can see, it isn't a literal translation. In this instance, the verb ser is in future tense to express doubt. Si is used to denote condition or assumption. It can mean if or whether or provided. Gabriel is trying to say that she does not believe it was a miracle while trying to remain somewhat polite. No sé si lo sabrán, pero you can subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos like Learn Spanish with Futurama. Gabriel, disculpe, ¿podría decirnos algo sobre este gran milagro? Yo no sé si sea un milagro. Sí, exacto. Gracias, Gabriel. Gabriel. Pero hay muchos que sí lo creen. Sí, yo de hecho vi al bebé. ¿Qué rayos? Es la golfa, Crystal. Fue mi error. Hay muchos que se lo creen means there are many that do believe it. Se is used in verbs or pronominal constructions when the subject is in the third person and can be translated as one self. Lo refers to the direct object of the sentence, in this case, miracle. Creen comes from the verb creer, which means to believe. So even though Gabriel is skeptical about it being a miracle, most people eat it up. De hecho means in fact or indeed. De hecho, vi al bebé. In fact, I saw the baby. Hecho, which comes from the verb hacer, can also mean done. Ya está hecho. It's already done. ¿Qué rayos? means what the hell. It's an expression used to express surprise, disgust, or lack of understanding. Rayos means lightning. So, ¿qué rayos? is always used figuratively unless, of course, you're talking about a real storm. Jane's mom says que rayos because she is both surprised and infuriated by the fact that Crystal is talking about her daughter on national television. Golfa means slut in this case. It can also mean bitch. But be careful because its male equivalent, golfo, means something very different. Golfo refers to someone who doesn't have a job, dresses badly, is daring or cheeky, and is generally a scoundrel. Jane's mom is calling Crystal a slut for talking nonsense on TV just to get attention. Pero hay muchos que sí lo creen. Sí, yo de hecho vi al bebé. ¿Qué rayos? Es la golfa, Crystal. Fue mi error. Salía de mi auto esta mañana. Traducción. Tuvo sexo en el auto para que su mamá no supiera que regresó con Donnie. Y Jane sostenía al bebé y lo juro, tenía esa aura. Salía de means I was getting out of. Salía comes from the verb salir, which translates to get out or emerge. De indicates the person or the thing that owns the noun it complements. In this case, auto or car. In this case, Crystal is talking about literally getting out of her car before she saw proof of Jane being a miracle. Regresó comes from the verb regresar, which literally means to go back to the place where you came from. Jane's mom, however, isn't using it in the literal sense, since she is not referring to Crystal and Donnie going somewhere together. Regresó con here means to get back together with, in the sense of dating someone who you have already dated before. In order to differentiate the two meanings, you have to look at the context. In this scene, Jane's mom is making fun of Crystal for being in a not-so-secret relationship with her ex. Salía de mi auto esta mañana. Traducción. Tuvo sexo en el auto para que su mamá no supiera que regresó con Donnie. Y Jane sostenía al bebé y lo juro, tenía esa aura. Ay, oigan, oigan, ya basta, ya basta. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Oigan, here means listen. It's an expression used to get someone's attention. Just like oye, oigan comes from the verb oír, to hear. Oye is used when you're talking directly to one person, while oigan is used when addressing more than one person. Jane uses oigan in order to get everyone's attention away from the TV and onto her. Oigan, ¿habéis visto nuestro PDF gratis? We've created it so you can easily access and study all the vocabulary we have learned today. Get it by clicking on the link in the description below. Ya basta means that's enough. It's an expression used to put an end to a conversation or an argument. By itself, 
Ya means already or now, while basta translates to enough. Be very, very careful with your spelling here. Basta with a B means enough, while basta with a V means vast. So while ya basta with a B means that's enough, ya basta with a V means it's already vast. And of course, B and V make the same sound in Spanish, so be careful not to mix these up. In this scene, Jane just wants everyone to shut up and listen to her, because she is not too happy with the media scandal she finds herself in the middle of. Oigan, oigan, ya basta, ya basta. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Jane, yo he lidiado con la prensa muchos años. Déjame ayudarte. Claro. He lidiado means I've dealt. Lidiar almost always means to deal with, to face or to fight something. In this scene, it's clear that Rogelio de la Vega is talking about having had to deal with the press before on account of being a famous telenovela actor. Déjame in this context means let me. The verb dejar can mean a lot of different things. Stop, put down, drop off, dump, allow, and many more. But if dejar is followed by the personal pronoun me, it can only mean two things. If you say, déjame ayudar, it means allow me to help. And if you say, déjame en paz, it means leave me alone. Since déjame is followed by ayudar, Rogelio is clearly asking Jane for permission to put his knowledge of show business to good use to help Jane navigate the scandal. Jane, yo he lidiado con la prensa muchos años. Déjame ayudarte. Claro. Primero. ¿Quieres callarlos o salir en televisión y conseguir un contrato para un libro? Solo quiero callarlos. Es lo que asumías. Asumía comes from the verb asumir, which can be translated as to think or to assume. In Spanish, you also asumir responsabilidad, which translates to assume responsibility. Or you can asumir el mando, which means to take the lead. Primero. ¿Quieres callarlos o salir en televisión y conseguir un contrato para un libro? Solo quiero callarlos. Es lo que asumí, así que hay que dar una declaración directa enfatizando el hecho de que fue un error médico. Enfatizando means emphasizing. Enfatizando comes from the verb enfatizar, which means to express the importance of something. Here, Rogelio de la Vega is saying that they should emphasize that this was all a medical error, so they get the media's attention of Jane and of her family. Así que hay que dar una declaración directa enfatizando el hecho de que fue un error médico. Muy bien, Rafael llegó a tiempo para la clase de lactancia. Llegó a tiempo means got here on time. Llegó comes from the verb llegar, which means to get, to arrive, or to come. A tiempo can either mean on time or in time. Fun fact, Spanish people are notorious for never getting anywhere on time. The narrator of the telenovela is sarcastically commenting on the fact that Rafael got home just in time to witness the hot mess on their front lawn. Muy bien, Rafael llegó a tiempo para la clase de lactancia. ¿Qué rayos está ocurriendo? Todos están locos. Todos están locos means they're all crazy. Locos or locas is an adjective that translates to crazy. As we've seen before, this noun comes from the adjective locura. There are many fun ways to call someone crazy in Spanish. Loco, disparatado, alocado, lunático, and my personal favorite, chiflado. Remember, Spanish is a language rich in synonyms. Here, Jane is telling Rafael that everyone went crazy over the news that she somehow got pregnant without having sex. ¿Qué rayos está ocurriendo? Lo que me da here can be translated as OMG. Lo que me da is not a fixed expression, but these characters use a lot of abbreviations and internet slang. Lo que me da comes from que me da algo, which can be translated as I can't even, meaning that the person is overcome with emotion at seeing or witnessing something incredible. For instance, the two girls seeing a mob of people and TV reporters on Jane's front lawn and seeing everything aired on television. Tomamos una selfie means let's take a selfie. Tomar literally means take. Tomar una selfie is commonly used by Spanish speakers in Latin America, while someone from Spain would say 
hacerse una selfie. So in Latin America, you tomar or take a picture, while in Spain, you hacer or do a picture. The two girls are asking to take a picture with Jane in order to post it and gain clout thanks to Jane's sudden viral popularity. <laughs> Valeria y Victoria, hijastas de Rogelio, crearon la página web de Jane la Virgen. Hashtag Pepe Mateo, hashtag Milagro, hashtag Jesús volvió. Hijastras literally means stepdaughters. In Spanish, you don't add the prefix step for words like stepdaughter or step sibling. Instead, you add the suffix astro or astra. Let's look at some examples. Hijastro, stepson, hijastra, stepdaughter, hermanastro, stepbrother, hermanastra, stepsister, madrastra, stepmother, padrastro, stepfather. Valeria and Victoria are Rafael's former stepdaughters, which means they are the daughters of a woman he's divorced. Drama! Valeria y Victoria, hijastras de Rogelio, crearon la página web de Jane la Virgen. Hashtag Pepe Mateo, hashtag Milagro, hashtag Jesús volvió. ¡Ya tienes tres temas de tendencia! ¡Es grandioso! ¡Basta! ¡Vayan adentro! Basta means enough or stop that. Before, we saw ya basta. But as you can see, basta can be used by itself and still have the same meaning. Vayan adentro means go inside. Vayan is an imperative form of the verb ir, which means to go. Imperative forms are used to give instructions, give advice, give orders, express urgency, or express prohibition. Adentro means inside or within. Adentro is different from dentro. Adentro means to go inside and it's used with verbs expressing movement. Vamos adentro. Let's go inside. Dentro is usually followed by de. Dentro de means inside of. It requires no movement. Están dentro de casa. They're inside the house. Here, Rogelio is telling Valeria and Victoria to leave Jane alone and stop adding to the already stressful situation. Now, let's watch the whole clip without subtitles so you can see how much you've learned. Es que no entiendo. ¿Cómo pasó esto? Todo empezó cuando la gran estrella de telenovelas, Rogelio de la Vega, tuiteó la alerta a Ámbar ya que su nieto fue secuestrado. Y ahora ha tuiteado que el bebé ya está a salvo. Arroba Rogelio de la Vega. Jane tiene Matelio. Gracias por sus oraciones. Hashtag familia, hashtag amor, hashtag famor. Ahora la historia es una hashtag locura. Y al buscar en línea Jane Villanueva, esto es lo que se ve. Ay, no. Jane la Virgen embarazada. ¿Podría ser un milagro moderno? No. Sí, fue maestra en nuestra escuela. Y ustedes estuvieron explotándome. Y creemos en ella y más. Cuando empezaron a pasar cosas. ¿Cosas? ¿Qué cosas? No tengo idea. Durante siete años quise embarazar. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? No lo sé. Abracé a Jane. No Mi bebé creo. nacerá en tres meses. ¿Has oído de las coincidencias, linda? Eso está muy raro. ¡Abuela! ¡Oye! Y es muy extraño. Parece que Jane entró en labor a bordo de un autobús de la ruta 125. Veamos a la mujer que le ayudó, el arcángel Gabriel. Es Gabriel. Disculpe, ¿podría decirnos algo sobre este gran milagro? Yo no sé si sea un milagro. Sí, exacto. Gracias, Gabriel. Gabriel. Pero hay muchos que sí lo creen. Sí, yo de hecho vi al bebé. ¿Qué rayos? Es la golfa, Crystal. Fue mi error. Salía de mi auto esta mañana. Traducción. Tuvo sexo en el auto para que su mamá no supiera que regresó con Donnie. Y Jane sostenía al bebé y lo juro, tenía esa aura. Ay, oigan, oigan, ya basta, ya basta. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Jane, yo he lidiado con la prensa muchos años. Déjame ayudarte. Claro. Primero, ¿quieres callarlos o salir en televisión y conseguir un contrato para un libro? Solo quiero callarlos. Es lo que asumí, así que hay que dar una declaración directa enfatizando el hecho de que fue un error médico. Muy bien. Rafael llegó a tiempo para la clase de lactancia. ¿Qué rayos está ocurriendo? Rafael, todos están locos. Valeria y Victoria, hijastras de Rogelio, crearon la página web de Jane la Virgen. Hashtag Pepe Mateo, hashtag Milagro, hashtag Jesús volvió. ¡Ya tienes tres temas tendencia! ¡Es grandioso! ¡Basta! ¡Basta! ¡Vayan adentro!
In this next video, Rachel tells her crush she's pregnant. So go find out what happens in that Friends episode while you learn more Spanish vocab and enjoy more pregnancy shenanigans.